Yellowstone supervolcano had plates grinding and how a major earthquake forced the park to be evacuated. Now I'm keeping an eye out on the uh, steamboat geyser eruption that will be taking place any minute now. So we'll take a look at that together near the end of the tape of, of the video because that will be exciting to watch as well. The locals were whipped into a frenzy because of the major 7.3 magnitude earthquake struck more than half a century ago during which one claimed you could literally hear the plates grinding together. Callum Hoare of Express UK reports, and we have reports here by Mike Poland, the geologist in charge of Yellowstone. We know that Yellowstone Caldera is the first ever U.S. National Park, and it gets, it gets nicknamed Supervolcano because of the capacity to inflict a worldwide devastation if it has a super eruption. It's in the state of Wyoming, Northwest Wyoming, and also in uh, extending into Montana and Idaho. It's a super volcano and is constantly being monitored by US Geological Survey for signs of any type of changes, specifically if there is a super eruption on its way. The scientist in charge is Mike Poland, and he recently revealed that there had been more than 135 earthquakes in the region last month, including a swarm of 70, 78 local, local tremors. And uh, if we take into account Montana, uh, we have a total of over 260. Of course, that area is also the supervolcano. So is Idaho. We've had Idaho quakes, and we've also had uh, South Wyoming quakes, south of the border. While there are concerns over the possibility of all these earthquakes triggering an eruption, the largest over this period was 2.9 magnitude. When we take Wyoming into effect, into account, we've had 3.5 and larger. And uh, on southern Wyoming and Montana, 3.5 and larger recently. And uh, they, those could have been felt by people. Now, these natural events can be much more dangerous if they occurred on a larger scale, and researchers are more than aware of this. Dr. Poland revealed in his monthly update of Caldera Chronicles how things were very different 60 years ago. The 1959, August 17, Hebgen Large uh, Earthquake, the Lake Hebgen Lake Earthquake, took place at 11.37 at night. It was in the summer, and there were, of course, visitors there, more so nowadays. Here we have a map of uh, where the exact location of Hebgen Lake is, and this is basically the caldera that you see here. The Yellowstone Lake is the body of water uh, just above 5 o'clock position of the red border, and the red outline is the caldera outline. And we used to see that area of Maple Creek around 10, 11 o'clock on the screen. Well, Hepkin Lake is just outside of the park border there. So it's not even in the park boundary. It's outside of the park. Right here, as you can see, that inverted Z, Hepkin Lake. And there's actually a lot of people that uh, go for vacation there. They have hotels and motels all around the lake. People go stay there and they go fishing for trout. Unfortunately, a lot of these rivers around Yellowstone empty into that lake, and they have been found to have a lot of mercury. The water has a lot of mercury because the geysers have steam containing a lot of mercury. So Hebgen Lake, unfortunately, has a very high mercury count, and so do the fish, the trout. Unfortunately, people who eat those fish are in danger of having to mercury contamination because of it. This is Mike Poland, the geologist in charge of uh, Yellowstone. I don't think this is Yellowstone. It looks to me like it's um, somewhere else. It could be uh, Kilauea, the crater before it erupted or after. I have no idea. But it's not, it doesn't look like Yellowstone to me. Now, uh, going back to the article, uh, this is the same man that, of course, Mike Poland, who 
uh, did not want NASA touching Yellowstone whatsoever. Remember, NASA had a plan to drill holes into the uh, the super volcano and fill the holes with ice, icy water to bring down the temperature of the magma. And uh, of course, he says, no, that's a very dangerous thing to do because you may be actually drilling into the surface or maybe the drilling would cause quakes that would crack the chamber roof and cause an eruption that we're trying to forego. So this is the man that uh, said no to that plan. So, the 1959, August 17, Hebgen Lake, magnitude 7.3, others say it was 7.5, but it was, as you can understand, a major earthquake. It caused landslides. It caused uh, waves of the uh, bodies of water there to be sloshing back and forth to the point where a lot of people believe that one dam would crack and uh, come to a catastrophe, which it didn't. Now, there was a 15-year-old man that was there camping with his family. At that time, Mr. Stryker detailed that he heard what was something uh, blood churning cold. Uh, he heard, he believed that he heard the plates grinding. Now, there were others there that said that uh, it was a dreadful night. They, uh, there were witnesses to the landslides close to the tented areas. The uh, Madison River was displaced, they said, a huge wall of muddy water and debris swept over campsites. So you can imagine what was going on. One tent was half buried and uh, a witness said she and her husband managed to grab the hand of their son and rescue everyone in time. She said I was the luckiest person there. Now, after only three weeks, the Dam River created a lake more than 170 feet deep, and that lake has come to be known as Quake Lake, Lake, and it covers an area of five miles today, five miles long and a third of a mile wide. Today, tourists in the area can stop by Earthquake Lake Visitor Center. It's about 27 miles north of West Yellowstone, and they can uh, see what took place there over half a century ago. Yellowstone monitoring and here we have the earthquakes USGS and uh, these are today's basically all sizes as you can see 1.3 4.4 miles depth. Uh, we know that the basically the magma chamber is about three miles down. So the 4.4 mile depth here is in the magma chamber. Others say it's very shallow. The magma chamber is only one and a half miles down, but uh, I'm going to go with three, three to five miles down just to be conservative. These are today's quakes, okay? And um, this one is 2.4, 10 miles down. And you can see here we've had a tremendous quake swarm here. Okay, this is Old Faithful area. And if we go down this way, you can see what happened here. This was uh, August uh, 15th, three and a half magnitude. So that was not small. Okay, here we are in uh, Jackson, Wyoming. And we've even had recent quakes past yeah, if we go out, we'll see them much better, but we won't see the big ones. Okay, what's this? This is 3 magnitude, two days ago, 6.2. Okay, just uh, southeast of Casper, Wyoming. And we had another one here at one point. Okay, maybe it was, this is, this is everything over 2.5. Okay, Hebgen Lake is around here. This is the area of the big quakes. Okay, this is 4.2 as you can see, 3.8 and 3.3. So, um, and if we go in, we'll see how many there are, hundreds there. Okay, a little bit more, 118, 120 in this section. 
Plus the other ones here are about, what, 112 or some odd. Okay, 77, 112, 77, depending on where you're going. Okay. Okay, 130. So you can see there's about 160, 260 to 280 earthquakes there. But let's go to, um, I want to go to the Norris Geyser Steamboat. Let's go to Steamboat and see what's happening because it's always almost ready to... Okay, you can see what's going on here. This is the build-up towards the Steamboat Geyser eruption. Okay, this is when it erupts. Oops, sorry, let's go back so you can see the other ones too. Um, this is as it builds up towards the eruption and then the temperature falls after the eruption. Then you have these three ticks. Three fourths on the fourth tick it starts building up again. This build up was pretty short, a short period. And then it had one, two, three ticks, up ticks. And then it had this build up here, one, two, three ticks. And you basically you can predict when the next steamboat geyser eruption will take place and this is ready I think this is basically ready look at this uh, any minute now <laughs> it's like when is the baby due you know, type of thing so you can predict when because of these new graphs you can predict when steamboat will be erupting I would say what in about six hours within the next six hours let's see Okay, this is the monthly, this is the weekly, okay, but this this seems to be uh, pretty long of duration, it seems to be longer than this one, definitely longer than this one, so we'll see what happens. When we see that tick down, that's when it'll, it'll have taken place. I'll leave links below for you for this, as you can see, we have a tremendous amount of activity there, and this is in the Norris Geyser Basin, we know that Steamboat Geyser is the biggest geyser in the world and it can go up to 300 feet high if it's uh, strong enough, if the blow is strong enough. We know that the park, Yellowstone uh, Park, has the uh, about 10,000 hydrothermal units, hydrothermal areas, and 60% uh, of the world's geysers, including the biggest steamboat geyser. I'll leave links below for you for this. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media, and not certainly on, not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.